I used to work for a guy named Jim McClain. Famous instructor, if you've heard of him. He's always in like top three or four instructors. Uh, and he had a training program, he had a book called The Eight Step Swim. And people always took it the wrong way thinking you're supposed to think about every step. What it really was was a training manual for mm -hmm. instructors to kind of know what's going on in the swing, break it into some pieces that you can explain. Uh, one of the pieces that he talked about was what are the main, what are the power sources? And he talked about four, I would say that there's really, once we get to a better player, there's five, but round four is pretty bad. But for somebody just sort of getting their rhythm and their, and their pattern going, we want to think about it in a couple of ways, right? Mm -hmm. So, number one, power source, the hands. They go very far, yeah. right? Number two, Hands and arms. Ready? Oops. That's why we don't just swing hands and arms. Yeah. Really went drastically farther. All right? Then we're going to have hands, arms, and weight shift. Right? Yes. Hands and arms include me and the shoulders as well. Right? That went away from another 40 yards farther, right? Then we have hands, arms, weight shift, and rotation. Okay. So now it's all together, right? We shift and then we rotate. It's in that order. Hands, arms, shift, rotation. Of course, that goes dramatically farther too. And it's because it goes in the right order that those each one builds on the next. So what I like to talk about with this is to create a drill so we can build the swing every time. This would be a nice little way to get yourself warmed up and get the feelings of the swing, get the sequencing, the order of things in the right order, okay? So I line up three balls. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna start here. With this shot, I would do this, especially when you're first starting out, use a very lofty club. I have a pitching wedge here, maybe your sand wedge, maybe your nine iron, but that's it, right? You wanna be a little closer to it, just make it easy. We're gonna be a little bit closer together with our feet. Weight on the front foot, get ourselves a good setup, nice legs, good balance between the front of the toe and the heel of the foot, weight forward maybe 60%, maybe 70, and we're just going to start with a swing. Now if you're just starting out, what we're trying to do, if I'm using this, the balls as a line, mm -hmm. I want the bottom of my swing to be here, okay? You could also lay some tees here mm -hmm. and have them in your practice swing and have ball, tee, and then one without a ball and just a tee for your practice swing, and then a ball with a tee, and then one without a ball and have a whole little setup here. Or we can just go, okay, I know that tee would be up there, and then have a tee in front of the balls. Okay, but essentially we're trying to bottom our swing out in front, and all I want you to do is take your arms back, you're shaking hands, and through. And what we'll notice when we do that, and our weight's forward, by the nature of my arms, the face opens up a little bit. I didn't have to roll the face. Don't ever roll the face. And for us, we tend to do that. So we've been talking about trying to keep the right hand feeling a little on top. But even with that, right, it's not in the same position as it was here. If I bring it back, it's a little bit open, right? And it's just the nature of my arms and our So we take it back, essentially the face opens a little bit. And then we bring it through because my weight's forward. My center is my heart. So I'm going to bottom out at my center, and then we're going to finish here, okay? So this is going to train us for just the arms, hands and arms, right? See how I kept my chest down, tried to keep my legs quite, then maybe they move a little bit, but it feels like they're not doing much, it's all arms. And we'll notice, I didn't even try to look at it, and I hit the target directly, because the face opened, and the face closed, and right in the middle was square. Okay, now I'm just going to stay in the same spot, mm -hmm. and now I'm going to add another element. We're going to add a weight shift, and that's going to be represented by something very simple. I'm going to take this inner part of the knee, and I'm just going to squeeze. Squeeze. Very subtle. This squeeze, as you can see, I kind of go up on my instep. I don't want this. Okay, weights forward, same setup. Now I'm just going to add a squeeze, but timing is crucial here. The squeeze or the weight shift, same thing has to be right as we're getting to the top, 
starts the downswing. I describe it as like kids on a swing set, they're going back, they kick their legs at the right time and they get momentum. That's what we're gonna do with our golf swing. So right as I'm getting to the top, I wanna change direction, squeeze. See the knee come in just a little bit? And what we'll notice here is without any extra oomph, the ball went over the target. I just automatically added some energy without adding some, yeah, energy, okay? Then we're gonna stay in the same spot again where I just hit the ball. Now we're just gonna do here. And you see, I'm really just trying to go to parallel. Maybe I'm going a little bit past, but I'm trying to keep it parallel. Now, instead of just adding a squeeze, we're gonna add, we're gonna let it go. We're gonna let the belt buckle finish at the target. Our chest and our eyes are gonna kind of rotate with it, but it's still gonna start with this. So it'll be the same here. And then we're just gonna have some freedom. Okay, and we step up, get a couple where we feel like we brush the ground. Good, good, feels good. Reset, weight forward. And what do we notice about that one? Another 20 yards. And I didn't swing any harder, I kept the same size. But it's that way we're going to do it. So I want you to set up and do this drill and build into your swing. And this can be a great little way to warm up your swing because if we see it in a way, this is going to be the entire golf swing in a mini version. So if I just get set up here and start to do some swings, and I just start with the hands and arms, right, just this level, right, and then I start kicking the knee, right, and I start to rotate, knee kick, rotate, knee kick, rotate, and I just start making it bigger. All those elements, you can see them, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it's the same rhythm, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if we can do this, then we're gonna be good. And we're gonna get the rhythm and the timing of our swing. If we don't, we just come out and start whacking balls, we don't have a rhythm, right? Every single day, we need to find our swing. I saw somebody, not sure who, somebody on Instagram was talking, told this story, where they were, Describing it as like you had to walk through the desert to get to the mirage, right? You had to walk through the forest to get to the goal, whatever the analogy was, but you get the point. And you can't avoid it, you have to walk through it. Now, if you're just going out and whacking the ball, you're gonna walk all the way around and get lost in the woods. And we want a direct route, we follow the process, we create our feels at the beginning. We find our swing every day because we have to find the most important part of our swing, which is the bottom. And the way we find the bottom is from being in our rhythm. Being in a one, two, one, two, one, two. If we find that every day, and we have a little process to get in that for our practice sessions and certainly for when we go play, man, I got my rhythm. I'm way ahead of the game. Right Makes sense, right? Yeah. And certainly we want to do the same thing with practice. We have the same basic warm up for practice as well as uh, going to play. When we go practice, we want to practice our, our startup. Okay? Then we start to be able to play. We see the pros. You go on pjtour.com. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it's there. And they'll show Ricky Fowler or Rory or Tiger going through their warm up. They'll skip all the in betweens. They can edit it all together, all their shots. You'll see them do some little pitch shots. And then they work through their set slowly. Then they go do some short game. They do the same certain amount of putts and certain amount of long putts and little chip shots, pitch shots. And they kind of go through their whole bag with what they feel is necessary. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to try to finish with a driver or whatever club they're going to hit for their first shot. They're going to practice that first shot a few times. They're going to use their imagination. Mm -hmm. They're going to see the fairway. They're going to know exactly what the ball flight they want. They've already planned their whole round, right? Shot to shot to shot. And so they're going to start with that and then go right to the tee. Hit that first shot, hit that. Where they're off and running, they got the rhythm, they're ready to go. So, you know, maybe we're not Tiger Woods, but we want to take some of those elements into our own have a rhythm and pattern to everything we do, mm -hmm. so then it applies to a rhythm and pattern to what we do with each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let's give that a try. That's what we're doing. We'll start right here, and we'll just be hands and arms. Just this, nothing else. Very quiet, eyes down. And then, then we'll add a little knee kick. Knee kick. Mm -hmm. It's so subtle, it's just a little, a little in. Every time it'll be practice for us. Forward. Try to brush the ground in front of the ball. Just your arms. Arms and hands on. 